This episode of Insanely Chill is sponsored by my ass. My ass. Eat it. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! What's up, people? How's everyone doing today? Happy uh, Wednesday to you. Happy hump day. Hope hope everyone's having a good one. It's me, Cody, here. I apologize for that that start if you were offended by that. Um, Actually, no, I don't. That was funny. That was funny. If you're offended by that, you can, frankly, you can eat my ass. Um, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, it's been a really, really good week. Solid week. Um, someone asked me, uh, someone asked me recently, I think on Twitter or something. Um, I tweeted actually on my, on the podcast Twitter account. I said, we're going to do a Q and a this episode. And I said, tweet me some questions. So, um, that's going to happen a little bit later. But one of the ones that just came to mind was, uh, you know what? I always fucking forget to pour myself a glass of water before I start recording this. Why does that happen? Okay, you know what I'm going to do? There's this Dasani water bottle sitting here on the table, and I think I'm just going to take a chance. It's not mine. So I think I'm going to take the chance and maybe drink it. The problem is, see, this is why this is a big risk here, is my roommate, Marcus, is sick as a dog right now. He's just been hacking away. And so by drinking this, I am kind of risking everything. I'm risking, I have a marathon in two weeks and I'm risking that. So the the question right now is, do I get up and do I grab a cup of water and take a little break, which means that I'm gonna have to edit out that pause or am I gonna take the chance, the ultimate risk here and drink this Dasani water bottle and risk getting herpetitis? I'm going to drink it. I'm going to do it because I'm a fucking bad boy. I really, really hope that's not his. I really hope. I immediately regret that. (laughs) Why did I do that? Fuck, man. If I get sick before the marathon, that's going to suck ass. Okay, see, this is what... This is what... uh, And I'm sweating again. God damn it. Every fucking time. So hot in here. Um... Donate to my Patreon so I can buy a um, AC unit, please. I'm a, I've just been, just been sweating. I'm okay. So here, here's, here's what I wanted, wanted to say. So the DM or the question in question, the one that I was talking about was the girl asked, "How is your marathon training going?" That was one of the questions that just popped into my mind right now. We're gonna do the rest of the questions. I got some more shit I want to talk about before we do the rest of the Q and A. But uh, this is something I wanted to talk about because, as some of you probably know. As most of you know, because I've now mentioned it about four times in this episode, I am doing a marathon in a week and a half, I guess. I'm flying out next Thursday or Friday to Toronto. And and so the marathon's on Sunday, and so I've been training. Now, I say that with, you know, air quotes, training. You've been training um, because I haven't really been training as hard as I should be. And so last week, I was like, you know what? This this is the fucking week. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stop I'm going to stop pussyfooting around. I'm going to stop bullshitting myself and I'm going to take this seriously this week and I'm going to fucking do the do the run. So I it was I think I was supposed to run two and a half hours, 16 miles or something. So the night before I cooked a good meal uh, or had a good meal, I forget which one it was. Um carbed up, loaded up on my carbs, had my gels, my energy gels, had those ready to go. Had two of those in a fucking, in the holsters. Not really, but I had them in my pocket. You know, the, you know, those fucking, (laughs) if you're like, if you like run triathlons or know somebody who runs triathlons, you know what I'm talking about. They have like, they have like legit, like a, like a tool belt for their gels and for their water and shit. Whenever they go out for like a long run or a long bike ride or whatever, they're literally wearing like a, a utility belt full of like energy gels, like with little holsters feel like you could fucking just whing, pull one of those fuckers out of its sheath and suck down on it every time you need a little bit of energy. Um, so I had my energy gels all ready to go, took two of them out. So I, this is what happened. Cooked a good meal the night before, got a pretty good sleep, woke up mad early, so it was still nice and cold outside. Um, and I, and I, I did it. I did it. I fucking went for it. I had two energy gels, so I ate them strategically. I ate one about 10 miles in, and then I ate another one about 15, 14, 15 miles in, something like that. 
And I made it longer than I was intending to go. I made it 16.3 miles or something. So right now I'm thinking maybe I'm not as fucked for this marathon as I thought I was. Maybe there's a chance I'll still be able to finish this. Now keep in mind that's still 10 miles um, less than the total distance of a marathon. So still a ways to go. <laughs> this is, it's funny because this is the time I'm supposed to be start tapering. This is the time I'm supposed to be like, be like, all right, well, better take it easy now. And I'm like, no, I, I still need to do more shit in the week and a half to actually get ready for this. So tomorrow I'm supposed to run 18 miles. I might try and make it a little bit longer. So tonight I'm going to do the same thing. Might cook up some pasta, um, and, uh, carb up a little bit, maybe take three energy gels out tomorrow. Who knows if I'm feeling a little bit zany and I'm going to try and I'm try and do it. But so keep me in your, keep me in your, um, thoughts, I guess. Um, um, yeah, speaking of, um, I mean, speaking of thoughts and prayers, um, fucking the Vegas shit. I don't mean, we don't have to talk about this because, you know, I like to keep things light and, and, uh, you know, more fun on this podcast, but man, that's just a fucking absolute tragedy. Um, my heart goes out to everyone affected by that. Um, for sure. I just, the thing, you know, you know, and I think, I think when this shit happens, it's, it's a good, it is a good moment to talk politics and all that stuff. Like, I like that it sparks that kind of conversation. Twitter just seems to be fucking you don't, I don't know. Twitter is just a bad place to go after shit like this happens. But I do like the political discourse that happens when something, I feel like it is an appropriate time to talk about gun control and whatever, and we definitely need it. Um, the thing that I thought was fucking absurd after this shit happens is people's, this is the main reason why I think social media is just awful after something like this happens is, is people that post about themselves in the wake of a tragedy how the f- how the fuck do you think that's okay? I I cannot I couldn't believe the amount of posts I saw with I in it. I I people that weren't even involved at all. Like literally posts that said I went to Vegas a couple weeks ago. This is so scary. How does that have anything to do? Because you were in Vegas, now all of a sudden now you're like, "Oh, this is bad because I was in Vegas a couple weeks ago." And so I know what the strip looks like. And so, wow, this really affects me. I, the amount of fucking posts, it was unbelievable. People that, like, and then, and then literally there was, I found, I found, I was on Facebook or something and someone had posted a picture. It was like, it was like a group of girls and it was like a classic sorority pic on top of like the balcony of one of the hotels or whatever. And they were all super happy and smiling. And it was like, my thoughts and prayers go out to those affected by the Vegas uh, shootings and it was just like a picture of them posing on the I couldn't fucking believe it I couldn't believe it who in their right mind looks at that picture and goes this is appropriate for this moment fucking absolutely inane just inane these people I can't even like this girl on Facebook was just giving Vegas updates even though she wasn't even even there it was she was just taking what was on CNN and just adding it to her Facebook. It's like, all right, man, like, what are you doing? It's so weird. Wow, I've been to Vegas once, so this these tragedies just really hit home for me. No, it's just bad because it's it's an awful thing. People are dying. Why you gotta make this about you? Sorry to get a little bit uh, uh, (laughs) dark there. It's an awful thing. Like I said, uh, there's places, you know, there's lists of places you can donate blood and everything. So um, if you're in the area, try and do that. Help as you can. Um, What else do we want to fucking talk about today? Oh, shit. Okay, so uh, last week... um, yeah, so this happened. This fucking happened last week. I was I was a little bit peeved by this, and I say that you know now that I'm saying that I'm thinking um, people have kind of been tweeting me and be like, "Yo, you're really like negative all the time. <laughs> like your podcast is just you like hating on shit all the time." And 
that is, I could see, you know, that's true. That is true. I could see how you could think that. Um, definitely. Um, but I also like a lot of other things. I also like a lot of things. It's just not as fun to talk about shit that I like. I like, um, I like, you know what? Here, I went to Palm Desert this weekend, this past weekend, and I loved it. I loved the shit out of it. I love that place. I think it's amazing. Um, I think it's, uh, it's awesome. There's a lot of things you can make fun of about Palm Desert, which is probably, you know, once when I talk about that, that's probably what, that's usually the road I choose to take is pick on the things that you can make fun of about Palm Desert, but it's a great place. It's amazing. I had a fucking blast. It was me and Kelsey. We went there for her birthday. Just relaxed, you know, chill by the pool, had a little two day vacation. It's pretty dope that you can, I mean, LA in itself is, is a great vacation destination, but even like just drive two hours and you're in the middle of the desert, just chilling by the pool. Pretty fucking dope. See, when I talk about good shit, it's just boring. No, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't boring to me, but I'm saying describing it, it's just like it get. you know, what am I going to say? Oh yeah, I had a great time with my girlfriend. You're like, all right, what else? Tell me something, tell me something bad about Palm Desert. Um... This is what I want to talk about. Okay, so last week I was in the Grove walking around, okay? I was just like, I went there uh, to, to meet Kelsey. She was shopping or something, and I was at acting class, which is pretty close. And so I just drove there afterwards to do a little shopping. And I'm walking through the parking garage back to my car, and this girl tweeted me, and she goes, uh, hey, my brother-in-law and my sister just saw you at the Grove. You're really short. That's what the tweet was. And the picture was of me from afar. Like, it was like my back. I was like pretty far away. Like, you could tell they like zoomed in. And that was the picture that she tweeted at me. And it just said, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, whatever, my sister just saw you at the Grove. You're really short. And that, and then with that image, right? First of all, I... I get really, cre- I don't know what, I get really creeped out when I see an image like that. Of, I don't know what it is. So, and I was, a, I was a little bit fucking salty about how she just said, you're really short. It's a weird thing to tweet at someone. I don't understand. Like, it's just like a straight up insult. It's not funny. It's just like a straight up insult. You're really short. Like, it's not even clever. It's just like, hey, um, hey, my friend saw you. You're fucking short. Just like dismissive and whatever. First of all, <laughs> I'm not that short, okay? <laughs> and this is still me being salty. I'm five nine. It's not that bad. It's just under average. I actually looked up the average height of a of a male of an American man after I after I got that tweet. Um, and it I think it's five ten. So I am under average. So technically I am short, but not that short. Anyways, I don't usually get salty about that because people call me short all the fucking time. People on the internet. It just for some reason the picture of me. I was like, I don't. I don't get why you would ever tweet a picture like this at someone. Like, I people walk around, and if I saw someone that I really liked, you know, if I saw fucking, and I'm not comparing myself to this person at all, but I'm saying if I, for me, if I saw someone like Leo walking around in public, or fucking, I don't know, Johnny Depp, or someone that I like, crazy celebrity, I would probably take a picture like that too. I would zoom in and take a picture, and I would send it to my close friends. I wouldn't tweet it at the person and be like, hey, I would... I, I saw you from afar today. Like, I don't know. I saw the picture and I was just like, oh man, someone was just like watching me and like didn't come up to me and say hi or anything, was just watching from afar. For some reason, that thought creeps me out at all. And it's not because, now I, the reason why I bring this up is because I tweeted that and I was like, hey, I responded and I was like, cool, uh, don't tweet pics like, don't tweet pics like this at me. It's really creepy. That's what I tweeted. And it, you know, it was a little bit, because of the short thing, I just wanted to be a tiny bit mean or whatever, but I got a shit ton of responses being like, dude, you're such a douche, like, you you are where you are today because you put yourself all over the internet, what do you expect, people are going to take pictures like this, yeah, I get it, people are going to take pictures like that, don't tweet them at the people, that's so weird, how do you not get that, how do people not get that, that that's weird, hey man, I was creeping on you from afar, just thought you should know, like, come up and say hi or say that you saw me, but the picture is just creepy. And I, people, people were like, and now the, the girl who tweeted at me, I don't, I don't really care that much. Like, some girl tweeted, tweeted me after and she was like, yo, I can't believe you 
reacted this way. If I was that girl who obviously was a fan, then I would be so offended and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I understand. Like, I really don't. To the girl who tweeted that picture at me, I don't really care that much. It, it, no hate on you. And I just think the the responses is what surprised me. People being like, dude, you, you're fucking, what are you doing? You're a douche. Why are you being so mean, man? People are going to take pictures of you. You should be flattered. No, no. I reserve the right to not have my back, the picture of my back tweeted at me from afar and then just wonder who the fuck was creeping on me. It's weird. And the fact that some of you don't, or the fact that some, not you, but the fact that some people on Twitter didn't understand that just absolutely, this, I just floored me. I showed the picture without any, any context, without saying the story at all. I showed the picture to my buddy, Adam. I was just like, look at this picture someone took. And he goes, he goes, oh man, that's creepy. And I was like, thank you. I didn't even have to explain anything. And he was like, that's a weird thing to do. I think the, I think the, I think Twitter is just a bad place to go. No, it's not. I actually like Twitter. I've been fucking with Twitter a lot recently. Has Twitter like gotten more popular recently or something? It's like hella, I feel like just like a, just tweets in general of, from everyone. It's getting a lot more like favorites and retweets and shit like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping, but it feels like, it feels like Twitter's popping. I don't know. Um, And now they made the tweet limit 280 and i've been seeing these like novel tweets it's almost too long right i'm like i don't got i don't fucking time for this i start reading one of those giant tweets and i make it halfway down it's like all right what is this chapter two i want to i don't i don't i don't got time for this shit 140 was a good little bite-sized piece of info and now it's like people can really really tweet their opinions and stuff which is I mean, but you know, if we've seen anything from the from the Vegas thing, it's not good. Not good. Um, I want to apologize for something that I said the last episode, and I want to apologize because it was just dumb. I have these moments, dude, where I'm just fucking dumb, just so dumb. Like when I did the when I did the. Um, this video isn't up anymore, but on my channel, I did a video where I took like a American citizen, citizenship test, such a hard word to say, citizenship test. And I, and I didn't know the first president of the United States. I think generally I'm a pretty, I think generally I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm a decently smart dude, but then I have just moments like that and it's just, I'm fucking dumb. And so I had this moment last and it just, they keep happening. And no matter how hard I try to, um uh make sure that doesn't happen it it fucking they happen because i think i'm just dumb but i last episode i talked to i took i had this like 5 minute bit about how we burn charcoal for energy which we don't at all we burn coal for energy and they're two different things i think so you think i would have looked this up but i did and i did briefly but i didn't really get the whole deal i just was like ah well this was a mistake i apologize for this i want to I want to bring this up on the next one. I just, you know, I'm just dumb. I'm just dumb and uh, forget words a lot. And um, I'm sorry about the whole charcoal mishap. If you listen to that, the funniest thing is I tweeted or I, I not tweeted. Sorry, I wrote uh, a comment. I pinned it on that on the podcast, and I was like, "Sorry, I meant you know, I, I meant coal, not charcoal. I just fucked up, fucked that up." And people were like, "Yeah, we didn't even notice." So I guess that makes us just as dumb. <laughs> so if you were one of the people that didn't notice that, shout out to you. And I'm going to take another sip of this herpetitis water right now. God, I really hope this isn't getting me sick. Um, okay, here. Uh, I wanted to talk about fucking, have you guys watched American Vandal yet? Uh, it's Jimmy Tatro's show on Netflix. It is, I finished watching it this weekend when I was in Palm Desert. I think it's one of the best shows I've seen in a long, long fucking time. Straight up. If you haven't seen it yet, absolutely watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, and uh, Calum is in it. He's the guy I did the series with last October, The Boonies, which was up on Go90. Um, and Jimmy Tetro's in it, who I'm friends with, who is actually coming on the podcast. This, this We're going to record this week. So check, uh, keep an eye out for that episode on Sunday. Um, but man, the show is so good. 
So originally, like the 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 trailers and stuff that came out for it, like last month, were all, you know, it, it was all like the the show is basically a parody of uh, making a murderer. It's like a crime documentary in the exact same style, but it's all about um, figuring out who drew, who spray painted a bunch of dicks on cars at a high school, right? So the marketing was very focused on the dicks, who drew the dicks, right? It was the marketing made it seem like it was a joke or more of a joke than it, than it actually was. The show is like, is the show is like, it's almost not satire. Like it's om- like the, cr- what am I trying to say here? The, so the commercials were all about like, you know, it was very focused on the dick drawing. It was like, this is a documentary about someone who drew some dicks on some cars. So immediately you thought, you looked at this and you're like, how, first of all, how is this a real show? Second of all, how are they going to, have eight episodes. This feels like a YouTube sketch. This does not feel like an eight episode Netflix show, right? About figuring out who drew dicks on cars. But when you watch it, it's like, it's almost not satire. It's incredible. Like the plot is very, very engaging. The crime is like a real crime. Like if you think about it, it's like 20 cars or something of this, whoever vandalized, spray painted, which is like hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. So it's actually a federal like a fence doing something like this. And the kid who got convicted, who's Jimmy Tatro's character, he um, got expelled and like couldn't get into college and all this stuff. So it like fucked his life up. And so, and, and then the, the documentary ends up being like really good, even though the whole thing's like fake and it's satire. It's like, it's good and it, it is on its own. Like the crime is real. The, the investigation is real. The plot is real. Like, all the people involved or it just, it's so good. I don't know. It's crazy. It blew my mind. And so if you haven't watched, and it's hilarious too. It's really funny. In like the second episode or something, they're talking about um, Jimmy's characters named Dylan. And they're talking about his, um, um, his YouTube channel and on, in the show. And he'd had this like prank called baby farting where he'd go up and like fart on people's babies. <laughs> <coughs> ah, that was really funny. Um, yeah, so watch that show if you haven't yet. I was absolutely floored. We couldn't stop watching it. Kelsey and I were just playing episode and epi- episode after episode in Palm Desert. Um, Palm Desert was fucking dope, man. A lot of old people there for sure, but it was sick. We stayed at the Marriott, the JW Marriott there, which is this gigantic hotel with this fucking like lake inside it. And uh, just cool. Palm Desert's like one of those places where I feel like Palm Springs is like a little bit like a little bit more. I don't want to say trendy, but there's like more like boutique hotels and like quirky places to eat and stuff. Palm Desert is very much like like expensive um, chain, like not chains, but like Morton Steakhouse. And like, what is that? Is that just like old retirement places or like? tourist places or something they're all really good like we went to this place called fucking sullivan's it was a steakhouse like sim- similar things as morton's like pretty expensive but just guaranteed good food and it was just, like, cr- incredible and then we ate at uh fucking tommy bahamas which you'd think is just a store for you know the premier store for all of your hawaiian shirt needs which it is and that's why i primarily go there all the time but it also is a restaurant in Palm Desert. It is, motherfuckers. So when we first made the reservation, I was asking Kelsey, I was like, where should we go for dinner? And she was like, let's go to Tommy Bahamas. And I was like, what to get, why, to stock up on Hawaiian shirts or whatever? Because I already got like a shit ton. And she was like, no, there's a restaurant there. And I was like, what, what do they serve? Just like Hawaiian food? <laughs> She's like, no, it's like really good, like American food. And so we did, so I did it, fucking pulled the trig, made the res, and then we got there and I have, I have never looked, I can't remember the last time I looked at a menu and was like, I want everything on this menu. Everything looked fucking good. They had like, God damn, I don't even know where to start. I'm having really good flashbacks of this place right now. Just like, like spare ribs, fucking like this ramen concoction um, what did I, what did I fucking get? Oh, they had like fish tacos, which look really good. I got the Cuban sandwich. This is what I'm talking about. It wasn't even American food. It was everything. 
It was fucking everything. It was every genre. Cuban, American, fucking spare ribs, which is American. Uh, ramen, Japanese. It was great. Every, every, I wanted everything on there. We had, we had, we had, now this is, this is how you know I'm fucking, I just love food. I fucking love food. I'm surprised I'm not four million pounds. We had this motherfucking goat cheese macadamia nut encrusted. Fuck me up, fam. Fuck me up. And it had mango salsa. Goat cheese covered in macadamia nuts with some sort of mango salsa concoction on it. Fuck me up, dog. So good. So goddamn good. And then, uh, what did Kelsey have? Some sort of chicken sandwich with some fries, and I had the Cuban sandwich. God damn it. And then we had some, you know, it's on, on vacation. So, you know, it's the time to drink tropical, tropical drinks. I had, a, I had a Mai Tai. I had a few Mai Tais that weekend. And, uh... You know, she was sipping a pina colada. You don't really need to know all the details of this meal. I just, I, it was so good. I want to relive it. So this is my two things. See, this podcast is, is more positive. You want to watch a good show? Watch American Vandal. I loved it. You want to go to a good restaurant? Go to Tommy Bahamas in Palm Desert. Loved it. It was just good to have a fucking weekend away where we just like relaxed. I haven't had like a relaxing vacation. I know the last time I did was in Hawaii with my parents, and I don't know if you've been listening to the podcast for that long. By the way, there are a lot of people that tweeted me pictures that they listen to every single episode, so fucking mad respect to all of you guys. I'm going to pick like two or three of you and send you um, free merch. Um, I'm working on like podcast merch right now, so I might have to wait until the podcast merch is out, but uh, mad respect to people who actually tweeted me pictures of their episode shit. You guys are the true chodesters. And I appreciate every single one of you. I'm actually wearing the Chodester shirt right now. You see right here. Boom! If you want to get this shirt right here, you can go to CodyCoMerch.com. I'm revamping the merch line soon. Um, we're gonna come, I'm going to come out with Halloween stuff in the next few days. And then um, a la Jake Paul. I don't know if you saw that shit, but he was fucking j- pushing his fucking Halloween, jamming his Halloween merch down his followers' throats the other day. My... Um, one of my like producers for something texted me and was like, yo, you got to peep Jake Paul's story right now. It's just like 500 seconds long of him pimping his goddamn Halloween merch out. So I think I'm going to do something similar, kind of like, uh, you know, tongue in cheek kind of, um, kind of stuff for Halloween. And then I'm going to revamp it. I'm going to come out with all new shit because I have a bunch of ideas and I'm pumped. So if you want this Chodester shirt, I don't know how much longer it's going to be available. So you can get it at CodyCoMerch.com. This episode brought to you by CodyCoMerch.com and my ass. Eat it. <laughs> I had a uh, fucking, I had Taco Bell breakfast on the way back from Palm Desert. Mm, God damn. Crunch wrap, breakfast crunch wrap. There is no better breakfast fast food than that. Breakfast crunch wrap from Taco Bell. My G's. Oh my God. See, there's another thing I like. Boom, Taco Bell Crunch Wrap. Taco, uh, I mean, breakfast Crunch Wrap from Taco Bell. Boom, three things I like: American Vandal, Tommy Bahamas Restaurant, Tommy Bahamas shirts, love them, and breakfast Crunch Wrap from Taco Bell, baby. Four things right there. It ain't no thing. This is what we're doing this episode. We're talking about we're being positive, and we're talking about things that we like. Good shit. Um. Should we do a little Q and A? Let's do a little Q and A. Also, one one fucking thing. Um, people keep so I I posted a picture. I know I've been, you know, um, talking about. So I posted a picture, um, and it's of me and Kelsey. I posted a, a couple pictures of me and Kelsey now on my Instagram. People keep saying that I uh, that we look alike. Which I don't really think we do when I look at it, but um, people say people say you look alike, right? I don't know what they, if they say that to spite me or if they just say that because they literally think that. But it's like, why? Yeah, of course. What do you mean? I'm the vainest person in the entire world. Why would you expect me to date anyone else besides someone that looks like me? Right? Why do you think I'm dating her? 
No, I'm just fucking around. That was a little bit. That was a little bit I was trying. But I'm dating her because she's actually, she's dope and she's really funny. She's funnier than me. Way funnier than me. Fucking everyone on the damn video. If you, if you didn't see, I posted a P.O. Box video, P.O. Box opening video on Friday. Um, it's on my main channel. So if you were one of the people that said, it's all podcast stuff. It's all people from the podcast that send me shit. So if you are one of those people um, and you want to see me open up the shit, then go for it. It's on the main, it's on the main channel, that video. Let's do a little Q&A action. God damn it, I haven't eaten. I'm running out of energy here. Oh, what's up, guys? I asked this once, and I'm asking it again. You ever poop so good you bust a nut? <laughs> Can't say I've ever done that. Um, this is actually kind of funny. Uh, Kelsey tweeted the other day. She goes on her Twitter. I thought it was fucking hilarious. It was like... She goes, um, she said, being on a trip with my BF is great, but when the fuck am I supposed to poop? I still haven't told him I do that. Hopefully he doesn't see this. <laughs> that shit has 14,000 likes. I didn't even retweet it or anything. Um, and she got a whole bunch of responses to that being like, yo, if you can't, if you, if he can't, if he can't see you poop, um, he's not the one or like, if you don't want to poop in front of him, he's not the one or something like that. And we are just lolling at those responses. This, because this tweet, how do you, again, how do you fucking read that tweet and think that that's not a joke? It says, I hope he doesn't see this on the tweet. It says that in the tweet. And somebody looked at that and was like, well, this, this girl obviously hasn't found the right one because if you can't poop in front of your boyfriend, then he's not the one for you. It's like, yeah, I'm going to see the tweet, obviously. It says, I hope he doesn't see this in the tweet. This is clearly a fucking joke. People just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, no, so to answer your question, Kindle, no, I haven't pooped so good I busted a nut. I haven't done that. Uh, what's your favorite meme right now? What is my favorite meme? Maybe like, fellas, is it gay if you bleh? That's a kind of a funny one. I see that on Twitter sometimes. That one's old, though. That one's old. I'm not a big memer. I don't like, like whenever I see memes on Instagram, I don't, I don't follow any meme accounts. I don't, I like scroll by them on my explore page. I never look at them. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry. How's the weather? It's good. It's, uh, it's hot. It's, uh, pretty sunny. I'm sweating. Hopefully it won't be too hot tomorrow. I'm supposed to do this fucking 18 mile run. Um, how close are you and Zane? We're good friends. We're friends. We I saw him on. I went out with him on uh, Thursday, which was fun. Uh, we were in Hollywood somewhere. I saw Todd. Saw Scott. Um, we went fucking. I got invited to this ASOS party on Thursday night. ASOS, A S O S. It's like the British brand that sells like trendy clothes. This fucking party was just. I don't even know why I got invited. I have no idea. I asked my manager. I was like, is there anyone, is there going to be there? Is there, is there going to be anyone there that I know? And she was like, I don't know. I, it was an invite just for you. And so I was like, okay, fuck it. I don't wonder who invited me to this party. Because I don't like, I don't wear trendy clothes. I, that's like one of the things I don't really have the greatest fashion sense. I mean, I try, I just kind of like copy people who I think I should look like. So, but I'm not like pushing the, the boundary by any means of like what's you know what fashion is in LA I'm just not even gonna try doing that somebody invited me to this fashion party basically and I showed up with Kelsey and it's just like the trendiest goddamn people I've ever seen in my entire life like people where you're like I didn't even know you could wear that in public I've never seen anyone wearing that didn't even know you could you were allowed to wear that or that you could wear that like that you know what I mean people wearing pants and shirts stuff like that and we showed up and I was just like so like weirdly intimidated. I'm wearing just like a plain shirt, like a t-shirt. And it's just like, God, we're so out of place. I didn't see a single person I knew there. I don't know who invited me to that party. If it was you, I mean, thanks. But I, I want to know why. Why? It hit me up. Let me know why I was invited to that ASOS party. It was cool. I mean, it was fun. Good music, free drinks. That's always good. 
it was at the top or like one of the, I guess like the terrace level of this hotel called the Indigo Hotel in LA, which was, uh, which was pretty tr- uh, cool and trendy, I guess. So it was like a cool little scene, but we kind of just stayed for two drinks and then we we're like, all right, let's, we got to get the fuck out of here. We're just like very out of place. Kelsey wasn't, she's fashionable. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what I, you know, I would wear my own merch. I, if I could wear my own merch all the time, I would do that. And I do sometimes. But, you know, you, you can only do that so much before people are like, all right, man, why are you wearing yourself on your shirt? It's not even ironic anymore. You're just, you just like you a lot. What, are you dating someone that looks like you too? And I'd say, yes, I am, apparently. So, yeah, hope that answers your question. <laughs> How close are you and Zane? Pretty close. He's a, he's a good friend. We don't hang out as much as... Um, I just, it's hard to hang out with people who live on the east side, man. Cause it's like, you got to fucking drive. So every time I'm over there, I'll hit them up. And every time when they're on the west side, they'll hit me up. But it's like, that never really happens that often. Um, the only time I'm on the east side is when I'm at acting class or like doing for meetings or whatever. Do you regret becoming a YouTuber? Also, what are the pros and cons of being a YouTuber? I don't, I definitely don't regret it. It's a lot of fun and I like being in the community and I like, I really like making videos. I really like when I have a video made. Like the initial editing and stuff and filming usually is a little bit taxing, but once I have like a finished product, I'm fucking proud of it and there's no better feeling than that. The thing, the thing that I'm like learning to deal with as a YouTuber and I guess this is just like my um, brand of fucking content or whatever, but there's like a lot of ups and downs to YouTube. Like there's a lot of times where your numbers aren't as high, um, like months, you know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of times where you make a really great video or something and your numbers will be high. So it's like learning to deal with those ups and downs. And I guess like it can be said about the entire, um, entertainment industry. I've talked about this before. I think ebbs and flows and whatnot. Yeah, I have. I fucking totally have. So I don't need to talk about that again, but no, I like being a YouTuber. It's just, um, you know, learning to fucking deal with all the shit. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of YouTube, fucking um, iDubs came out with a content cop against Rice Gum this morning and I watched it. It's pretty good. It was pretty good. I think he could have gone in a little bit harder. I don't know. And I didn't think the diss track at the end was that entirely great. The lyrics were good, but the whole video was kind of awkward which I feel like if you're going to do something like that, I almost feel like if if you, I, I, I don't know if you don't know what I'm talking about. iDubbbz is a YouTuber, really funny dude. He does just comedy videos, but he also, he's like known for like doing these things called content cops. It's like a series where he'll like take someone's content and tear it apart. So he's done one on Tana. He's done one on like Leafy. He's done one on like uh, fucking, what's his name? The old dude with the beard. Uh, I forget. Um, and they're generally really funny. He's a smart dude, so he knows how to do that shit. He knows how to tear people apart methodically so that they can't. (laughs) And he's like ruined people's careers doing that. So he did one on rice gum and it was good. It was good. And then he ended it with a diss track because rice gum's whole thing, the reason why, uh, you know, how we got big is by doing diss tracks on people. So he ended it with his own diss track. And like part of, part of his video hating on rice gum was the fact that rice gum is really like greedy and like just won't stop talking about money. And it's just like obsessed with money and like flexes on his followers all the time, which he absolutely does. He's he 100% does that. That's my main gripe with him. I, besides the fact that it's just content is just not good anymore. Um, he like flexes on his fans and he won't he, like, all he talks about is fucking money and having money and buying shit. And it's just annoying. It's like, dude, like, why don't you just be creative again and like actually do shit that's not that not doesn't involve fucking money or views or whatever? It's so stupid. Um. So that's that was I Dub's like one of his insult or I guess like main points of the content cop was that um, Bryce Cum is greedy and is obsessed with money and he flexes on his followers and all that stuff, which I think is true. And then I Dub's ends his video with a diss track and the music video was just like, I really thought it was, it just felt awkward to me. It was like a rap, it was a diss song and they were rapping and the lyrics were good and the lyrics were like hard, but the video wasn't and it just like, it just kind of took away from it. It just didn't really, I just, I didn't really get it. I lost a lot of the energy and I kind of think it, it, 
at that point, I was like, you know what? I'd rather see Rice Gum rapping behind a whole bunch of hot girls that he's probably not going to have sex with. And I'd rather see Rice Gum, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be rapping super hard shit, I kind of do want to see the money in the cars. For some reason, it's just like, you just want to see that. I don't know. It just like, it adds to the hardness of it. I want to see the materialistic shit if you're rapping about, I don't know why. Their their music video was just a little bit awkward. It was them like just standing around and trying to be, I don't know. I don't know, man. So let me know what you think. Go back and go watch uh, go watch the content cop. I thought the rest of it was really good. I think Rice Gum needed to be taken down a peg because I don't know. Not a fan myself. Not a fan. Uh oh, let's see. I mean, let's just like see if there's any other questions here. How do you describe color to a blind person? Um, oh, man. You go, uh, this is what you say. You say, all right, picture, I guess, okay, what you see, right? You see black. Or just picture what you see, which is, I guess, nothing. Um, I guess it couldn't even be described as black. But just, like, take what you see, right? But imagine that as, like, red. Or, like, fuck, green. Imagine that. That's how you do it. Uh, what's your favorite college story? Someone asked me this before, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I gotta like that's something I actually have to like sit down and think about before. I don't really have any college stories that pop to mind. My favorite college story ever, man. We did so much in college. It's just like. How much did you invest in the equipment for your podcast? I think it was probably around 500 bucks, I think. Something like that. Decent amount. We got a mixer. We got a few mics here. These headphones are super cheap. I'd like to upgrade, though. I want like a fucking studio, man. One day, one day. What's your favorite Jewel Pod flavor? I think mint. I stopped smoking that thing, though. Can't handle that shit, man. It's bad for you, I think. This makes me feel like shit, and I, I'm training for this marathon. I gotta, I gotta chill. Who's your favorite member of One Direction? Zane. I was talking about this yesterday with Kelsey. It's like, who do you think has the best career since they broke up? I think, I think it's Zane. He seems to be the coolest. Harry, of course, you know, is doing the, I don't really know anything about them, honestly. I just know that Zayn, like, does a song with Party Next Door, and I love Party Next Door. And Zayn's music I fuck with. Whereas I, I, I'm not really, I don't, I haven't listened to any Harry Styles solo tracks. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you were older? I really wanted to work in tech. Like, I was obsessed with devices and, like, iPhones. And, well, I mean, I guess, like, iPhones weren't around when I was a kid. But, like, my computer, I was obsessed with my computer. I used to, like, I figured out what torrents were, really, when I was young. And I was always, like, really wanted to work in tech, always. And then when I finally started working in tech, I was like, well, okay, did it. Did the dream. So now I'm going to move on to something else. <laughs> Will you ever get a real job? Bitch, I had a real job. I don't understand why people like, people hate on like the the YouTube and I guess like the entertainment hustle. People say, yeah, well, why don't you get a real job? Why? Fucking real jobs suck ass. You get a real job. You do the real job. I'm going to do this shit because this is fun and it's a lot of work. It's probably more work, but it's fun. How do your parents and sister feel about your YouTube fame? Um, I don't really know if you can call it fame, but um, they love it, man. They're they're my biggest fans. My parents are my biggest fans. Although I gotta say, my mom texted me uh, a couple of days ago. She did not like the video of me roasting my fans. She didn't like that at all. At all, she thought it was very mean, and it 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 was mean. Um, but people seem to like it a lot. So I'm sorry if you were offended by the video. Um, my apologies. It was kind of mean, and. I'm just like not a really good roaster. I'm a good roaster because I'm mean. I know how to be actually mean. So that's, 
it's a weird thing. I don't know. I'll try to be more clever next time. I think we're definitely going to do a part two. Maybe it would be a little bit lighter, a little bit um, less mean, more clever roasts. Uh, should I put a hoodie? Should I put what's up, guys, on a hoodie? Someone just asked, when are we going to get what's up, guys? Should that be the fucking merch for the podcast? Just what's up, guys, on a on a hoodie? That'd be kind of tight. All righty, guys. Carl, Aaron said, where is my merch? All right, Aaron, I'm getting it for you. Craziest place you've been to and why? Love the pod. Love the pod. Thank you, slut hotel. Interesting. At there. The craziest place I've been to. The craziest place I've been to. I don't know what that means. I've been to a lot of crazy places. Probably Cambodia. Cambodia. There's this town. Where the fuck was it? Oh my God, it was so sick. Cambodia is nuts. It's crazy. And then there was this time, I think in Vietnam, there was this time we went to this like abandoned warehouse where someone was having a rave. And man, it was fucking nuts. There was like this guy with this gigantic canister of nitrous that was just like filling up balloons. Whippets, basically. People were doing whippets all over the place. We were just like in the middle of this abandoned, like rundown building in fucking random place in Vietnam. It was insane. Um, and then we rode on these guys' mopeds. You know, the, the dudes, will, you can pay them and they'll drive you back on the mopeds. Honestly, surprised we didn't get killed. Um, but that was pretty crazy. What else is crazy? Craziest place I've ever been. There's got to be more crazy than that. I can never remember shit. Cambodia, man. You got to go to Cambodia. Are you lactose intolerant? Uh, I want to say yes, but I, I got tested for it and I'm not. But, you know, if I eat ice cream, it'll fuck me up. I'll poop. All right, I'm going to end it on that, <laughs> guys. I got to go. I got. I want to film a video today. I got a funny idea, so I got to conserve my camera battery. I um, Thanks for listening, guys, if you still listen. Um, and if you if you made it to the end, appreciate you very much. Get the merch, CodyCoMerch.com. Um, and rate this five stars on iTunes if you feel so inclined. And, um, you know, I love you. Love you guys. Well, I don't know, do I?